Hello, Mr. Motors here. I want to talk about subnetting. What I'm going to do is take a Class C subnet address, okay? And the Class C address we're going to go with is 209 200 4.0. All right. And by default, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. This is a Class C address. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to borrow bits from the third, or actually from this last octet right here. Each of these are octets. I'm going to borrow them from the octet right here that has a zero in it. Okay, that's the fourth octet in this class C. Now, to understand this a little bit better, we need to draw a table here. Hang on a second. I'll tell you what this is. This table is the key to understanding subnetting. It's the, it's the exact, it will help you understand subnetting, period. All right. And the, how you derive this table is you take two and raise it to the power of um, zero right over here. So 2 to the 0 is 1, um, 2 to the 1 is 2, right on down the line. Now, there are 8 bits here representing 1 octet. So really, this is going to be this last octet over here. All right, octet, there's 4 octets in an IP address, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the subnet mask is used to determine which network a machine is on. Now, if we didn't subnet, we're about to subnet here in a minute, but if we didn't subnet, then what would happen is we would have an address for, a net, for this network of uh, 209.200.4.0, whoops, this network would be, um, if we did not subnet, we would have one network, which is 209.200.4.0, with 255 hosts going from dot one to 255. Actually, 255 would be the broadcast, so one to dot 254. Now, what we're doing with subnetting is we're just splitting apart the numbers from, in this class C address, from dot .1 to dot 255, or really from dot .0 to 255. We're splitting those up into separate little networks because the benefit of subnetting is to reduce the number of broadcasts, to reduce the traffic. Okay, so this little table over here is the, is the table that gets us started. I take, I take my numbers from right to left, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, successive powers of 2. And then up top, I just take my 128 and put it up there because what's going to happen is when I borrow bits, I borrow consecutively. And I'm going to borrow, let's say I borrow three bits, I'm going to borrow one, two, three. And those three are all turned on, one, 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 followed by four, five zeros, that number is 224. So if you take 128 and drop it up top, that would be one and all zero, one and seven zeros. But if you put another, turn that next one on, it's going to be one, one and all zeros, that number is 192 decimal. So 128 goes to the top, then I take 64, add it to 128, get 192. 192 and 32 to get 224, 224 to 16 to get 240, right on down the line. Now let's suppose I wanted to subnet and I wanted to just borrow three bits only, three bits. Well what I would do is I would count over one, two, three, and I would circle that little column right there. Now the first number over here is going to be called my I call it my new subnet mask. Whoops. That top number is going to be my subnet mask. Okay, I'll show what that means in a minute. So the subnet mask is right there. So the range increment is right here. That's important. So this bottom row is the range increment. Remember, I only wanted three bits. Now, three bits, if you take two and raise it to the third power, you're going to get eight. That gives me at least eight networks. Now, I only have five over here left over. See? Five. Two to the fifth is 32. So I got 32 networks or hosts for each of those networks. Now, really, you have to subtract two out of each of these. So two to the third minus two 
it's eight minus two is six because they're they're considered unusable. The first and the last, because the first network, the dot zero without subnetting, would be considered the network itself, and dot two fifty five is all is a broadcast. Um, so it's really six and thirty over here. Okay. Now this table is reflecting after I've borrowed. I haven't borrowed yet, so pretend this table is not here yet. But what's going to happen is here's what we do. We start off. We know the number of bits we want. That's three. That's a given. And then we here's how we break this table. This is the network number table. No, no, network number column. Network column. Low IP. High IP. And this is the broadcast column. Broadcast column. For the for the for the octet we're in is always an odd number. The first column is always an even number for the octet we're in, which is the last one. The second column is an e odd. Third column is even. Fourth column is odd. Just for the last digits. Notice that. Here's what you do. You start with zero, right there. You add the range increment of 32 to each of these. The first three octets are the same. That's easy. So you know, you could really strike all those out. And you keep adding 32 until you get to the top number. So you start at zero, add 32, which is the range increment, until you get to the top number, which is our new subnet mask. So my new subnet mask is 255.255.254. Okay. If you looked at it in all in binary, it would look like this, the mask. 111. One, one. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Those first three turned on. Okay. Now, um, you notice that what we do to get the low IP, what you want to do is first get the network number column, the first column here. Then you want to add one. To, now you want to get the row, net first row. So you start off with zero, increment by the range increment until you get to 224, the top number. Start with zero, increment by the bottom number until you get to the top number. Then you're going to add one to, to build the first row here. You're going to add one to the network number, so dot dot zero zero dot zero plus one is one, and then we're going to start on the other. That's the low. Then we're going to start on the other side, and the other side is dot thirty one. Well, you're going to subtract the next network number minus one to get thirty one, and then the host is one minus the broadcast. Okay, so the low IP is one plus the network. And do the broadcast, which is one minus the next network. Thirty-two minus one is thirty-one, and then the high is one minus the broadcast on that same row. The only one you have to go to the next row with is the broadcast. Just think about it. We're accounting for all the values from zero to two fifty-five way down here, and now these are on different networks. All right. So now I can have a router over here, and this symbolizes a router with different interfaces. And now all these people are on different networks. So I could have MIS for the dot thirty two network accounting for the dot ninety six network and IT for the dot one sixty network. Let's take the dot one sixty network for a minute. Everybody on that row has two oh nine dot two hundred dot four dot one sixty as the network number. And the computers on that row range from dot one sixty one to dot one ninety one with the broadcast, I'm sorry, one sixty one to one ninety with a broadcast of one ninety one. Okay? A while ago, I stated that 2 to the 5th was 32. If you subtract 2 out of that, the formula is 2 to the x minus 32, x being the number of bits we're dealing with. All right? 2 to the x minus 32, 2, two to the 5th is the number of host bits we have left. There's 8 bits, minus 3 for borrowing, 5 host, bit, host bits left. 2 to the 5th is 32, minus 2 is 30. Well, look at, lo and behold, for the first row, you've got 30 net host numbers on that row. So it's it's really two to the third this way and two to the fifth within a row. So you have 30 hosts times six networks. That's 180 usables IP addresses. Whereas before you subnetted, you had like 254. Okay. Now the problem is with subnetting is you lose some hosts. The benefit is you gain more networks, which helps divide the traffic, which helps. The router won't forward the broadcast. Now, if this is the IT department, only the people will see a broadcast. When the machines boot up, they broadcast messages. So when this boots up, when these are all the machines on the dot one sixty network, which is one sixty one to one ninety, when they boot up, people over here in this network won't see them. But if they want to print to a printer from one sixty network to the dot ninety six network, they can go through the router. Router will forward the request on over here. 
Um, that's all, all I have for this lesson. Thank you very much. Copyright, Todd Matters, 2007.